You are watching a master at work. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I am Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today, well, you would have known this already because you would have clicked the link for the FL Sun V400. I've been waiting for this printer to arrive for over a year now. It's been a hot topic in the background. It's a 3D printer unlike anything else. This is a Delta printer. It's one of those kind of printers that... It's kind of a little bit out there and FL Sun have very much embraced this. They've managed to get this out as a proper product. They haven't done it via Kickstarter. So absolutely hats off to you guys for making that happen. There is a couple of housekeeping things that I need to go through just before we get into this video. So this FL Sun V400 has been provided to me for review and testing. So they've not paid me. There's no money that's been changing hands. However, this video is being sponsored by PCB Way. PCB prototyping the easy way with their full feature custom prototyping service. But that's not all. PCB Way also offers services in 3D printing, CNC, laser cutting, vacuum casting, and injection molding. It's pretty much a one stop shop for your maker needs. PCB Way will also be sponsoring my content ongoing, and I've already put my orders in for some of these new makes that I'm going to be working on in the next few weeks. So check them out at pcbway.com. Thank you so much once again, guys, for sponsoring this content. If you're new around here, perhaps consider subscribing. Maybe chuck us a little like if you enjoy the video and comments go in down below. Let's get straight on into this one. And we are back. I've got to tell you, this machine was super, super easy to build and put together. I wasn't going to do a live stream on this, but I gave you a few elements there of how this went together and how it works. And as long as you follow the instructions, you shouldn't have any issues. Now, if you have a look at Nero 3D or Joel Telling's live stream, you'll see the trials and tribulations of dealing with a massive machine like this. And in fact, the whole desk was taken up with parts. But I wanted to show you starting with one particular thing which was print quality and also yeah i did get a bunch of paper nobody seems to know why we're getting this paper but that's what comes in the top of the box anyway let's move quickly on so i just wanted to show you a few prints this is the um, wexter admiral akbar that um, was printed on the v400 and i have to say it's if we can get some focus on that here we go focus Tell you what, I'll do. i put the paper in front of it. Maybe this is what it's for. It's like this. Okay, so this is the Wexter Admiral Akbar, which has absolutely come out beautifully. In fact, I don't know if I've seen a print this good in quite some time. Um, and this is stock as well. So this came straight out of Cura. And I'll talk a little bit about Cura in a minute. Um, this is one of the test prints, which is this little bunny thing. Um, and again, super smooth. And we were getting up to speeds of 400 millimeters per second on uh, on this particular thing, uh, which is great. And then we did this this little tower here that goes over to about 70%, um, and it printed it printed this way round, um, which I thought was pretty damn good. We've got a chip cube as well, which wasn't it wasn't that great, but it wasn't that bad either. I mean, it's okay. But um, the other thing I printed was uh, this from clock spring which is um, done in vase mode and a little tiny bit of stringing in there but nothing to sort of write home about 
and I was streaming this on Maker Deck. In fact, it's printing at the moment. Also streaming on Maker Deck. I'm printing the uh, Hex 3D Dulux Dragon at the moment. And uh, as I say, the quality is absolutely amazing. And not only that, the speed is just insane. Absolutely insane speed. Now, there's a lot of Cartesian printers out there that you'll see. It will do 400 or 300 or whatever they're claiming. The thing is with Clipper is that it tells you exactly at the point where it reaches those kind of maximums and minimums. So you're never really gonna be printing at 400 all the time, but at one point it was 526 millimeters per second, but only for a few seconds. So it's gonna fluctuate, but you can get up to that kind of speed on this particular printer. And uh, I'm sure people are gonna excel that further and further as the time goes on. Let me show you a couple of the time lapses and some of the prints. And also I'll go through how to install the printer profile on Cura if you're using a Mac like I am. So in this video it's printing the chip cube. It prints around about 72 millimeters per second up to around about 120. And then we then went on to printing the rabbit. This printed mainly around about 72. And you can see it flipping out there to around about 225 just for a brief moment. But your averages there are you know, probably gonna be around about 80 to 90 uh, dependent on what part it's printing at that time. So jumping over to what I'm actually printing now, I'm printing at 135%. And as you can see, there's around about 162 millimeters, but it's about to go into overdrive mode. I think this goes up to around about 528 millimeters per second in a second. You can see the tail and the head there um, basically coming away a little bit, 472 millimeters per second there, back to 97. Uh, and the reason for that is because I didn't actually wipe the PIE sheet down after I had um, last printed. So it's lifting a tiny bit. So it's got the speed and it's got the precision, so it would seem. So what don't I like about this printer? So starting on the hot end, the part cooling fan vents seem to be aimed at the nozzle and the heating block. Now regardless of the block having a silicon sock on it, the fans are still blowing on it, which means the state displayed on clipper and the power required to heat the extruder are increased. The fans are also a little bit noisy, but they are super efficient. So you need a level of compromise. The magnetic leveling switch. Now I personally would like to see an inductive probe or pressure sensor on the FL Sun range. Having said that, the switch has always worked and that the risk of it getting lost has been increased, unlike the SR because it now no longer has a storage drawer. Next, my big issue is gonna be with the filament holder. And I have to say, I'm going to struggle to change the filament over now, mainly due to the height of the machine and needing to be helped via a stepladder. The metal filament holder is also quite noisy. It clonks about, and I'll be looking to install some sort of filament dryer up there in the future, or perhaps remount it to the side for easier access. And lastly, when installing the filament, the screw that holds the tensioner is a little tricky to operate, but not impossible. Perhaps this is something that they could improve in the future while focusing on the user experience. But there are a huge range of positives, of course, including the build quality, which has not been scrimped on. In the past, cost cutting measures on the FL Sun products have become on the form of a single non TMC driver for the extruder. The clone elements, such as the motherboards and also the BMG clones, which have led to a number of quality issues, needed to be replaced at the user's cost. However, the V400 seems to have all the right hardware from the MKS motherboard to the integration of the screen, calibration, and for the most part, a well thought out interface. I've been very impressed with the direct drive system and the overall speed of this thing is just incredible. Teamed up with Clipper, it's the first production machine that I've seen that holds one of the alternatives to Marlin. Features such as time-lapsing and on and off screen monitoring shows that FL Sun really means business with this machine. I recall when the SR came out, I was asked several times about what I'd like to see on future models, including questions on price points. So in no uncertain terms, think that they have not been listening because ears are certainly open in China right now. Let's talk about the hardware and the specification. And also Cura. Now we're gonna start with Cura first because if you open Cura right now, at the time of making this video, you will not find the V400 as an option. However, I do have a cheeky workaround and I'm just gonna show you how to do it on my Mac. Now, if you have the USB that came with the printer, pop it into your computer right now and let's make this work. So on the SD card, you'll find number four, which is the config for Cura 4.3.1. What we're gonna do is copy that information and run on down into resources inside of Cura. So you right click on that to get that bit of information. Once you've clicked on resources, there we go, Mac OS, then resources, we're gonna then copy everything that we've just basically copied and paste it straight into definitions, extruders, and also meshes. There it is. 
So what we're doing is taking the fundamentals of what you normally would find on an updated Cura version and basically popping that straight into that file. Now, you can select different files, you can do different things. We are going to be using uh, this version of Cura, not the new version of Cura, because I don't know what the extent of the tests are at this point. So I'm just going to run it on the, the version that I feel comfortable with. And once you've done that, basically close that window down, close Cura down and then reopen it. And at that point, you'll realize that you can now select the FL Sun V400 and you can start slicing to your heart's content. Uh, this is a little model that uh, I've been messing around with. Uh, I've downloaded this from Colts 3D. I'm going to make this 250% because I don't think it's quite going to fit on the build volume. And then I'm going to go over to Make a Deck and I'm going to stream this one live. So I'll just select the file that I've just updated. And as soon as that copies, it's going to start printing straight away. Okay, let's talk about the specs. So the specs on this machine are very much enabled down to the integration of Clipper. Then the MKS Robin Nano V2 board is controlled by the Clipper screen, so all the commands come directly from there. The 32-bit element on that board and the TMC stepper drivers only complement the software. So it comes with a 7-inch touchscreen, web UI, 300 by 400 millimeter build area, carbon fiber rods and dual linear rails, a PEI flex bed, and filament sensor with the maximum hot end temperature coming in at 300 degrees max heat is 110 which apparently also has print recovery and i've not got to that stage yet filament materials include pla abs petg flexibles carbon fiber and pc so everything now comes down to price now with the early bird special if you were lucky enough to get this printer it would have been available for 699 dollars plus postage and then once the pre-order sale is complete it will cost around about 849 and I don't think it's that bad when you consider the speed and accuracy of this particular printer and it's a clipper printer so why wouldn't you want an awesome delta printer that runs at this particular speed so it's around this bit that I'd normally give the print details and my kind of final thoughts but I've got no problems with this printer it's been brilliant in fact it's been super super quick super super efficient and the print quality has been great but the really good thing is is that this printer prints so damn fast you can print this kind of size models in around about five to six hours, probably even quicker if you really want to push it. Um, and I also printed this articulated dragon as well. And that I think took around about seven hours, eight, maybe eight hours to print, um, which again is, is pretty damn cool as well. So if you're in the market for a new Delta printer or a printer that you just want to go super, super quick with, the FL Sun V400, in my estimate, is probably one of the best things you could probably spend your money on right now. That's my opinion. Let me know what yours is in the comments below. Thank you once again to FL Sun for sending me this printer and also PCBWay.com for sponsoring this content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. Smash us a little like and we will see you in the next video. I've been Sam Prentice. Happy printing. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.